want to get the current and best information out to people uh, about what expectations they have, they can have uh, uh, for going forward in Wayne County and how to access vaccinations. So Dr. Hamami, if you are ready, I think you have to share a screen if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mohanad Hamami, Chief uh, Health Strategist for uh, Wayne County. Always good to come and uh, update the committee on uh, the progress that we are uh, having during this pandemic. Um, do, do you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Great. Um, I only had uh, uh, a total of six slides and I thought I would give a little bit of an update in general of uh, one, what is the, the uh, distribution process, what it means when we say vaccines are available, how they are coming down the pipeline to the state and to eventually the county and the health department. Then talk a little bit about the numbers of how many doses have been shipped, how many doses have been administered. I will also talk about um, what does it mean as we hear about the different phases, which phase are we in? Is it one, is it B? What is what each phase is? And then I will pause there and I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. So uh, let me start by talking about the distribution process. So at some point in November, all states were required to submit to the CDC their plans of vaccination and based on these plans, this is how the CDC started uh, planning how they want to allocate the vaccines when they became available. We know that two vaccines became available towards the end of the year in December through an emergency authorization use. Um, the CDC uh, uh, allocates doses to the states. Those doses are shipped from the manufacturer to the state. The state then distribute those to local health systems as well as local health departments across the state. Um, as soon as one shipment is uh, uh, shipped by the CDC, a exact amount is reserved for a second dose. So if you receive 900, you have 900 reserved and so forth. Another uh, uh, allocation is done by directly from the CDC bypassing the states to retail pharmacies. Retail pharmacies had to enroll with the CDC with the specific uh, uh, task to uh, vaccinate those that are in long-term care facilities. And the two major retail pharmacies that uh, were federally enrolled are CVS and Walgreens. So anything that we're gonna talk about does not include those that are directly enrolled in, in, uh, uh, with, with the vaccine program. So with that said, I thought that it would be useful to talk about the supplies that we all hear about. To put it in perspective, the United States, all total the USA, 225.5, so almost 25 and a half million doses have been distributed, of which only 9 million has been administered, and that is uh, nationwide. As it relates to what we are dealing here in Michigan, we mentioned there are two vaccines. There is the Pfizer, that is the uh, notorious one that requires the low uh, temperature storage, the cold chain logistically is harder to manage, but it was also the first to be approved for emergency youth authorization. And then the Moderna, which is a little bit easier to, to handle, and this dictated who gets what and, and, and how many doses. Get, uh, are, are available from each vaccine. But as you can see, in total, the state of Michigan has distributed uh, close to 850,000 doses, of which Wayne County got 24,000. The majority that Wayne County got was 20,475. And when I say Wayne County, everything is excluding the city of Detroit. The city of Detroit, as everybody knows, has its own health jurisdiction and we're not including their numbers in. So total Pfizer shipment uh, uh, shipped to Wayne County was close to 20,000 of which 12,000 and, and a half almost went to hospitals and none of the Pfizer vaccine went to federally qualified health centers. These are the community health centers because of the nature of how you need to store it. 
Um, another uh, 3,600 doses of the Moderna went to Wayne County. The, again, the majority went to hospitals, 3,400, and uh, federally qualified health centers received only 200. So in total, Wayne County received about 24,000 doses of the both vaccines, 16,000 went to hospitals, and 200 went to uh, federally qualified health centers. Now, the administration record is, is different, uh, and uh, the uh, state of Michigan has administered between the two vaccines close to 233,000 doses. If we look at how many shipped, that is a very small fraction. But if we look at Wayne County of vaccine shipped 24,000, almost 22,000 have been administered. So Wayne County isn't lagging like the rest of uh, 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 the state. And if you look, there is a, a heat map on uh, michigan.gov website that has uh, uh, color coded. And you can see that mostly those that are uh, lagging in administration are those the smaller counties. So I assume some capacity, but also outreach. These are more in the rural areas. Hospitals in Wayne County, again, administered the bulk of, of the vaccine between the Moderna and the Pfizer, close to 17,000 uh, doses. And the FQHCs, remember, they only got 200 of the Moderna and already they have administered 135 of the Moderna vaccine. Again, these numbers do not include the city of Detroit. Um, as it relates to us as, as Wayne County Public Health Department, as I mentioned probably previously, we had the uh, uh, capacity to keep the vaccine and maintain the cold chain. So we were assigned the Pfizer vaccine. Um, every uh, time we order a uh, shipment, we order the maximum allowed. These are funny numbers because it comes in increments of 975, which are called trays. So when we order the maximum amount, we order uh, about, um, I believe, four trays, and that totals to 4,875. But what we get is less than what we order. And unfortunately, we do not know how much we're getting until, so, so we order on Thursday, by early Monday or Tuesday of next week, we get a confirmation of how much doses have been approved. Then a day after we get a note that says, your shipment has been shipped and you should expect it on such and such date. So that makes it a little bit challenging to uh, plan how many doses you are going to get because you, to, to give because you don't know how many. So the first shipment we had almost three weeks ago or, or, or now four weeks ago was in December 17 and we got 1,950 doses. Um, we uh, have exhausted that shipment completely. We have administered all uh, first doses in that shipment. We received a second shipment, which as, as you can see, it's half of the initial shipment of 975, for we received only one tray, and we also exhausted that. As of yesterday, we were down to 33 doses left. We were very happy to receive yesterday at 11 a.m. another shipment, and this time it is more than what we were getting allocated, and that is 2,925. Mm -hmm. So these are three trays. We've already, as of yesterday, used 450, and we continue, as many of you know, um, we are uh, doing drive-through vaccination um, every day, including Saturdays. So, so this shipment is probably going to be uh, exhausted by the rate that we're going uh, by probably mid of next week. Uh, and, and we hope that this is where the second shipment comes in. So in total, we, we received uh, 7,800, uh, I'm sorry, that number includes uh, second doses. We also uh, in, uh, have, mm -hmm. have uh, um, um, administered, uh, Friday was the second dose. As you know, second dose is three weeks after. So those that we started, on the 17th, Friday was the time for them to get their second dose. We had some on Friday, some on Saturday, and the majority are coming today and tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, and we have administered 141. Um, the, um, uh, these totals include a 1950 uh, uh, 
shipment of a second dose. So uh, these numbers are, are not uh, as accurate. The remaining doses for the uh, first dose is 2475, so 2,475. I apologize for this. Let me move to what we, when we talk about the phases. And uh, many of us uh, know that there has been a prioritization schedule that was updated by the state. The last time it was updated and published were by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services was on December 29th. And it moved us from initially, it was three stages now into two phases. There is phase one and phase two. Within phase one, there are three groups or three phases, phase 1A, phase 1B, and phase 1C. Within each phase of these, uh, there are priority groups. So priority groups in phase 1A include priority group one, which are the critical healthcare. These are everybody, and I'm gonna go into more details to phase one, but critical healthcare, these are the frontline medical workers. Priority group two are the long-term care staff and residents. And priority group three are what is called necessary health care. This includes everybody in health care that does not work in a hospital or an emergency room or in a ward that is caring for COVID-19 patients. So this includes dentists, pharmacists, urgent care, ambulatory care, um, uh, dialysis, laparoscopy, uh, endoscopy, everybody in that. Phase 1B includes the critical infrastructure and frontline workers. That has 16 categories or subcategories in it. Uh, this is where law enforcement, teachers, restaurant workers, agriculture workers, and so forth, including what they call government entities, such as Wayne County employees, municipality employees, and all that. that these come in the 10th subcategory in this prioritization. It also includes people that are 75 and older. Phase 1C includes those that are 65 and older, and anyone under that age that have serious medical conditions that put them at a higher risk. Phase two includes everybody else, and this is what people refer to as the public. And this is when anybody that asks you, they say, I don't fit in any of those categories. I'm just a normal per person, 40 years old. I don't have any medical conditions. I am not an essential worker. Where do I get and when do I get my vaccine? This is where this phase kicks in and it doesn't seem that we are gonna get to that anytime soon. On January 6th, the governor moved the state of Michigan to phase 1B, although we haven't completely cleared phase 1A, but she moved us to phase 1B and she picked four priority groups in that crit critical infrastructure that included public safety, these are the law enforcement, the education, and this relates to school teachers as well as daycare uh, staff, and then correctional staff, and these are mostly the sheriff deputies and anyone that works in a correctional facility. She also picked the group of 65 and older from phase 1C and included them in this phase. So we are technically, and this was announced that starting January 11th, we are technically now moving almost two phases and a half at the same time. We are still addressing phase 1A. We are now moving four groups from phase 1B and starting to use those or, or address those. And we have picked half of group 1C to move all at the same time and with an initial date of, one, of, of January 11th. As you all can expect, and I'm sure many of you have received many calls from everyone that this is included in saying it is Monday, January 11, how can I come and get my uh, vaccine? And I hope that, I wish that there was an easy answer to address that. So let me break down a little bit more details into phase 1A. And just to give you the estimate population and the magnitude of what we're talking about and specifically why we are still in phase 1A, although the state has moved. Now, smaller counties or smaller areas might have been able to move to 1B, but this would tell you why we cannot move to 1B with the same speed that, that everybody else is expecting us to. So the categories highlighted in yellow are what we were told by the state 
uh, is the responsibility of the Wayne County Public Health Department. Uh, in Group A, we have the emergency medical responders. These are EMS, as well as uh, the fire departments that are the first responders in, in, in terms of uh, ambulance. And that estimated population is 1,600. In Priority Group T, uh, two, these are the skilled uh, nursing facilities, the adult foster care, the long-term care, staff and residents that were not enrolled with retail pharmacies. We discovered several that were not enrolled in out of Wayne County with the estimated number of almost 2,600. Priority group three, which was most challenging, and we learned that this is ours to be responsible for on December 29th, um, where everybody else that does not work in a hospital. So these are the dentists, urgent care, as I mentioned. And it is such a hard to reach population. And we estimate that they are between 25,000 and 50,000. We reached out to professional associations, we reached out to medical societies, and then we set a link on the county website for practices to uh, uh, register. And we asked them, how many do you have in your staff and how many are interested in getting the vaccine to estimate that volume? The link went live last week on Thursday, and as of today, we have received registration from close to 1,200 practices with a total uh, number of staff of close to 15,000 and 11,000 that all said they want the vaccine. So again, this explains why we are still in priority group three and cannot move to uh, uh, priority group 1B yet. This would give you a snapshot of where we are. We have completed the priority group one in phase 1A for dose one. We just kicked started dose two. We have completed all the long-term care facilities and skilled nursing facilities that were not enrolled with the retail pharmacy for dose one. We are also uh, this week and next week uh, uh, doing dose two. And we are now doing the first dose for those medical providers um, the, the 11,000 and growing that are in priority group three. We are also, we have reached out to those three uh, uh, categories in the frontline essential workers, the law enforcement, education, and correctional staff, and we're working on getting the exact number. We're working with RISA, Homeland Security, and the sheriff to get us the total numbers of those that need the vaccine or are willing to take the vaccine. And we expect to start doing this by uh, mid of next week, but it is safe to say that probably by January 25th. Now, a big disclosure here or the big disclaimer is all this depends on how many vaccine do we have and the frequency of shipments we get. When we came to the two groups that the governor have included, and these are the 65 and older, and this is where everyone is calling anyone that they know to ask, when can I, I am a senior 65 and older, when can I get mine? It was virtually, uh, uh, it was a big challenge. I wouldn't say impossible. It was a big challenge for us to know where those people are, as well as to give them appointments to say Mr. Smith is going to come at 10 and Mr. Brown is going to come at 10.15 and keep that. And especially the way we are set up, it was virtually impossible to be able to do that. As I mentioned probably previously, we have a coalition that meets weekly um, that the uh, county has uh, established with our uh, health systems in out of Wayne County, specifically Beaumont Health, Henry Ford, St. John, St. Mary and Garden City. And we reached out to them and they, uh, in the spirit of collaboration, and I have to praise all the efforts and, and the spirit of co collaboration that we had, they said, these are our patients. We have a, at least a, a, a good uh, a slice of the 65 and older population. So anyone that belongs to us as a health system, so you are a patient of Beaumont or Henry Ford or Garden City or whatever, we will take that and we will vaccinate those seniors and we will make sure that we send them notifications and tell them you can get your vaccines from us. That left those that do not belong to any health healthcare system. Beaumont Health was the first to step up to the plate and they said, 
we will also take those. All they have to do is go on the website and register through my chart. And once they become part of the system, they can request an appointment and they can get their uh, doses from us. I spoke this morning with Henry Ford and they are considering the same. And I know that other health systems are gonna follow suit. Tomorrow we have another of our regular scheduled uh, uh, calls with our uh, partners in the health systems. And we believe everyone will do that. This is going to take a huge burden off the health department hand in handling this very fluid population as well as this very medically demanding population. So what we need to, to and what we started uh, putting out there, there has been a press release and any news outlet or media we can use to ask for all our senior residents that are 65 and older, not to call the health department because the message is going to be, you need to get it from your health system. Rather, there has been information that has been put on the website, at the county website, as well as these health system websites as to how you can get your vaccine through that. That leaves us with the remnants of the phases. And this is something that we will, uh, at, at now we are not addressing all those other subcategories in group 1B and the remnants of 1C are things that we are going to wait to see how we are moving this population and what the state is going to change in terms of their directive and where do they get us to. I'm gonna stop now and stop sharing my, my screen because uh, uh, I'm sure that there are many questions. So let me see, how do I stop sharing my screen? Uh, got it. We okay. see you there, Doc. All right. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. And that's uh, a lot. Uh, and I am going to, as we usually do in this committee, uh, go around uh, for questions. I see we also have Commissioner Varga and Commissioner Scott with us. So when the committee's done asking questions, uh, I will call on them. Uh, I'm gonna, just going to ask a couple to kick it off here, Dr. Hamami. Yes, sir. Uh, just for clarification, um, are the hospitals getting shorted on their orders just like we are as a county? Um, as far as we know, um, the, uh, everybody, including even uh, the state, are not getting what they asked from whatever source they get it. So the state didn't get what they expected from the federal government. Yep. We didn't get what we expected from the state and so forth. You can only distribute what you have. That's correct. So th this is across the supply chain. Correct. People are not getting what they're asking for. And the other one I want to ask for, you use the terminology, we are vaccinating daily uh, as a county, yes. uh, but as we just saw with the numbers, um, uh, we don't have that many vaccines. Uh, a question that comes in quite often to myself and I believe other commissioners is they'll see, oh, but I see Macomb County, the county itself is making big deal. You know, we're vaccinating people. Uh, or Oakland County is, uh, is what's really happening there just like in Wayne County where the county is kind of partnering with the health systems and the actual vaccines that are going in people's arms are the ones from the hospital systems when they say, oh, there's a Oakland County or a Macomb County. Is that really what's happening? Is it's the hospital systems vaccinations that are being used? Uh, I, I believe so. Whenever you see large numbers, so so uh, again, yeah. what, what I showed uh, when it says um, vaccines administered in Wayne County are 23,000, we know that this is not only the health department. This is everybody that had vaccine and administered. Right. Uh, the, the numbers that are more realistic, if, we, if I wanted to say we as a county health department have administered 3,500 doses, then ma that makes sense. Because I doubt that right. anybody as a local health department received anything beyond a couple of thousand doses. Right. So we did 3,500, but the hospital systems have done about 20,000 so far. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to open the floor to questions from commissioners on this. Uh, Commissioner Marecki, if you're ready, I will start with you. Thank you. I am ready. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Doctor, for this presentation. Extremely helpful, especially the part um, about the hospitals um, agreeing to take all the people over 65 years old. I'm wondering, I'm getting some emails now. Um, I'm wondering if you could go 
through the hospitals that you mentioned. I, I, I only thought it was U of M and Beaumont at, at, at one time. Would you mind repeating so I can let people know if they're tied into those hospitals, um, they will either be contacted by their portal or some kind of letter to their homes? Um, because this is going to clear up a lot of concern with the seniors, because that's who I'm getting the letters from are the seniors. I, I can expect that, Commissioner. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm specifically talking to those hospitals that are within Wayne County and out Wayne County. I am sure they are using the same uh, in, in, uh, across the tri-county area and, and as well as uh, the city of Detroit. But those that we know and committed for sure to vaccinate their own uh, 65 and older population are Beaumont Health, Henry Ford Hospital, Garden City, St. John, and St. Mary, with a caveat, St. Mary did not receive the Pfizer. They received the Moderna, and I know that they are challenged with the availability of vaccines. So there might be a lag over there. Okay. Those, and, yes. Oh, go ahead. And I know the, the, you, have, you have, yeah, um, the, I, they have some satellites in uh, Wayne County, but are they... We we, we, we do not have, we, uh, I, I assume they're going to do the same, but we didn't get any, we didn't communicate with them and they are not okay. part of that coalition. But, but probably if they are, then they should have something on their website. Um, those that are, again, the, the, the public that are, or the seniors, 65 and older, that are not patients of any of those health systems, currently, as of today, only Beaumont Health have indicated that they are willing to take their non-affiliated patients, but they have to go again on their website and register through the MyChart portal. This is a patient portal, and this is how they become able to do that. Henry Ford indicated they want to do this, but they are still ironing some of the capacity that they have and be able to do so. Okay, well, this is extremely helpful. I, I want to make a note about um, uh, the chair had mentioned Macomb County. They're getting all these kudos, but I heard the CEO today and yesterday say that they are not getting the vaccines. They're ready to vaccinate 19,000 people a day, but they're not getting them. So um, he's, he's kind of set that straight because I think the newspapers were making it sound like only Wayne County wasn't able to do to do all this. So just, just so the commissioners know that uh, he's been on two days in a row saying they're in the same boat that everybody else is in. And just one other question. Um, you mentioned phase three, our priority group three. Mm -hmm. There's 11,000 or 15,000 in that group? So uh, uh, we estimate that there must be at least 50,000 total in that group. Oh, but 50. who? Okay. Yeah. But who registered? Because we established a registry. Um, okay. Those that already registered, every day we get at least 500 that are registering through our portal. The total in the past five days, we have almost 15,000 total that said, uh, uh, total uh, uh, staff in, in these practices, but of which, because we wanted to gauge the, uh, how many are willing to take the vaccine, so we know how to do that. So of that 15,000, close to 11,000 that said we want the vaccine. So, so uh, as it translates to us as a health department, since we are vaccinating those, then we need enough for 11,000 as of today. Tomorrow, the number is gonna be, get more and more. And that's what we are doing day by day. Okay, all right, thank you. I think, I think that's it. These are just th some things I wanna put into an updated letter. Um, and these are people that are contacting me are like 75 and older. So they need to get a hold of their healthcare providers in this area. And I'm sure that'll be quicker for them. Thank you so much for this presentation. Totally sure. appreciate it. And I think that's all I have right now, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Commissioner. And Commissioner, uh, I will come back for a second go around as other questions uh, occur to commissioners while other discussions are going on. Okay, uh, Dr. Hamami, can you share that PowerPoint uh, with the commission, please, uh, so that we can get those uh, figures to all commissioners? Absolutely, uh, sir. Yes. Yeah. Email it to me, clerk of the committee, where, wherever you usually uh, email these, those things. So that would be great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, 
and I also want to mention here, and we'll mention later on, waynecounty.com backslash COVID-19. I don't think we have the ability to put that up on the screen, but waynecounty.com backslash COVID-19 has everything that we're talking about here. It also has the daily because the stuff is changing daily uh, almost with the vaccine. There will be the daily uh, press releases from the county, keeping people updated at that site. Uh, also at waynecounty.com backslash COVID-19 has the links to the state of Michigan. So you can go right from our website to the state of Michigan, look at everything that they're saying there. Um, and so all you need is waynecounty.com backslash COVID-19 so you can stay up with the county information as well as the state information. Uh, and I'll mention that again later. All right, uh, continuing now with questions from commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Dobb, do you have questions, please? Um, I do, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, Dr. Hamami, uh, can you give us maybe some uh, words of reassurance or some um, uh, words of uh, encouraging some patience um, amongst people? I know that everyone is really, um, you know, uh, ready to get the, the vaccine. Um, I, I, I'm kind of getting the impression from people who have reached out to me that there's that, that feeling of impatience, maybe a fear that there won't be enough of the vaccine. You know, I, everyone else is getting it, but I'm not getting it. Well, how can I get my vaccine now? Um, are the, you know, the, are the pharmaceutical companies going to continue to manufacture these vaccines until all of the phases have been completed? Will there be enough for everyone? That's a great question, Commissioner, and thank you. And I think you said the magic word, which is patience. And, and, and this is what uh, everybody, including us, should, should uh, acquire, that, that patience. So um, as, as you know, there are several vaccines that, beside the Moderna and Pfizer, there are several vaccines that are also uh, being considered by the FDA. There is three specifically in phase three. That are, these are the AstraZeneca, which is already in use in Europe. There is the Janssen, and then there is Novavax, which is also a European vaccine that is being considered for use in the United States. Worldwide, there are others. There is a Chinese vaccine, there's a Russian vaccine, there's an Indian vaccine and all that. As, that, as it relates to us here in the US, um, the two manufacturers, Pfizer and Moderna, are making more supplies. Um, the federal government has already purchased, for the first wave, has purchased 100 million doses of the Moderna and 100 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine. I, uh, my understanding is that they also placed 300 million doses order of the AstraZeneca. So the minute this becomes approved, then we'll have an extra 300 and then 100 million of the Janssen and 100 million of the Novavax. So hopefully if these are approved through, an, again, an emergency authorization use, then we are talking about close to, um, if my math is correct, close to 800 million doses. And let's split them in half because these are two doses. Then this is 400 million doses, which are enough and should be sufficient for all uh, our, our population. Not to count that there are more that are being made and we can also purchase more. But the key is when and how and the timeline, how these are produced. And this is where we ask people to be patient. And the whole reason why there is a prioritization phase and all those phases that we went through is because of the scarcity of the vaccine right now. That doesn't mean we will run out, but that means some people are at more risk because of whatever, whether their occupation or whether their health conditions or whether their age. And these are the first we need to tackle and then move to those that are at lower risk. With that, there is also the need to re-emphasize the message that because of those stages and because not all are being vaccinated, then we are not yet out of the woods. We still need to observe face covering and, and physical distancing and restrictions and so forth going down the road until we reach that magic threshold that people say it's between 70% to 85% of all people getting vaccinated. But that timeline is not anytime soon. So many people think that, okay, I got vaccinated, let's go have a party and let's go do all what we were doing back in February of last year. That, that is not true. 
Okay, thank you. And that was actually one of my other questions. Um, would, is it recommended to continue wearing a mask and practice social distancing, et cetera, after you've received that vaccine? Absolutely, absolutely. Because you're not only protecting yourself, you're also protecting others. You might be immune now because you have the vaccine, but that doesn't mean that you might not be carrying the virus and giving it to someone who is not vaccinated. And this is the whole concept of herd immunity. Okay, great. Um, one final question. How is the state distributing um, to uh, local and county health departments? Is it based on population? Um, you know, are we as Wayne County having the most people in the state, are we getting more um, vaccines than you know, maybe a rural county up north that doesn't have as many people? I mean, logically, you would hope that this is the case. I, I don't know if, uh, I'm, I'm sure this is a consideration, but I don't know if that is, um, the case. I think some factors uh, related to capacity and also um, the state is able to see how many doses are being administered because we enter everything at the end of the day in the MICR registry. So I assume, and I'm just speaking on my behalf, not, not to, from the state's behalf, but if I am looking at that and I see someone who is low to 10 doses and another that still have maybe a hundred, then maybe I'll prioritize the one that is lower than those that are not. Okay. All right. That is all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahami. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Dobb. And we will get a second crack at this as questions occur to people. So I'll come around one more time. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, do you have uh, questions for Dr. Hamami? Yes. Um, I just wanted to, I've got a, a short list, <laughs> but doctor, uh, one of the things I, I did want to ask, uh, and I think one of the answers has already been given about the slideshow or the presentation, uh, but I did uh, wonder, do, are there any plans currently uh, for getting vaccinations out to some of our senior facilities that are uh, may have 100 to 300 seniors and that have no transportation, that have fear of uh, going to a uh, hospital. Uh, they're concerned that they might get it, but there's a lot of them. The biggest problem is getting them there. And right. uh, if, if right. we have something like that, because I know at least three or uh, probably about six within my district, the three communities that are I'm getting those calls. That is a great question. Thank you, sir, for asking that. And uh, in fact, uh, yesterday we were, our, our internal team, we were discussing this specific population. Um, of course, if, if they belong to a long-term care or skilled nursing or even an adult foster care, then these are already a priority group one a, and, and we have covered those, but those that are uh, either homebound or those that are in a, a um, uh, as you said, they do not go out, then right now uh, they're probably going to be in the population of 65 and older, but not at the top for two reasons. Again, the availability of vaccine, and since we have entrusted that whole population with the health systems, and the second, because these are more homebound and they're not as mobile as the others, then their risks of exposure might be less. So we want to get to those first at risk and then based on the supply and the capacity, we want to devise how we can do maybe someone goes to these senior centers or someone goes to those that are homebound and reach out to them. Um, uh, we, we don't have anything solid as of now for these reasons that I mentioned, but also how many are there and how do we reach out to them and how much do we need uh, in terms of vaccine supply? I, I, you know, I appreciate that and I, I understand that it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't allay the fears that I think some of the seniors have that they're going to be left out and, and not get that. Uh, so I, I think it's really important that we uh, communicate with them very, very Absolutely. Now, now, one thing that I, I would still uh, say that although many of, of this population is homebound, but I assume at some point they also see a doctor. So this is where reaching out to their healthcare provider, and if that healthcare provider is part of any of the health systems we mentioned, maybe that is how they can get it. Okay. Uh, and another another thing that is uh, with the senior population too that 
uh, many of the hospitals and the networks of, uh, of the medical providers, uh, they want you to sign onto a portal. And a lot of seniors don't have access to a computer. They don't, uh, they don't, they're unable to sign onto the portal. Are there any provisions being made that they can call in and reserve? I, I know Meyer uh, has announced and, and they've, and I found out from someone else that they were actually uh, taking, you know, they would send someone a text. Well, that might be a, an issue too for some seniors, but it at least was, I think, takes care of the ones that don't have, uh, that, that don't have computers or don't or just are, are not uh, able to take advantage of a portal or signing up online. Uh, but are there any provisions being made uh, to reach out to those folks and allow them to sign up? Uh, yeah, the, the short answer is yes. And all those are points that we also discussed and considered. Um, uh, down the road, uh, and again, we, we are talking, we, we just started this whole process three weeks ago. So uh, we're, we're learning, uh, we're building the, the ship as we are sailing as, uh, in it. Um, uh, so, so right now, what we're hoping is that um, any help from family members, a senior who has a children or grandchildren that can help them in uh, accomplishing this, then we certainly would appreciate that. Our health system partners are looking for other ways that they can also, um, whether it's a, a text or hotline or, or a call-in system. But again, these are being put in place stepwise so they do not overburden. The minute uh, Beaumont Health announced that they are accepting, their uh, website crashed and, and you can imagine. So, so we're trying also not to uh, over flood the, the, the systems as well. Right. Uh, do you know when any of the, uh, these medical providers, the hospital uh, associations or uh, Beaumont or Garden City are going to be receiving their, uh, their vaccines where they can start doing this? Actually, um, uh, in yeah. The I don't have exact information, but I know that they, just like us, uh, are expecting at least a, a set frequency of a weekly uh, shipment. How much is, again, we don't know. I think they started, I know that Beaumont specifically and Henry Ford has started emailing their own uh, patients with uh, a timeline and with dates and what it takes for them to request and schedule. So um, that process has started. Um, uh, Beaumont specifically has centralized this whole process. They have their center in Southfield and they have the capacity of uh, uh, moving uh, close to like 11,000 patients. Again, if they have the vaccine. So, so um, the experience they had in vaccinating their own medical staff and because of their capacity has enabled them to put a robust system and a streamlined system in place. And this is why it made perfect sense for them to take that population and for, for us to, to trust that they are going to handle it in the best way. Uh, thank you. Uh, the other question I have is uh, as far as the, uh, when, when, someone is in the system or you get uh, vaccines, you said they automatically assume one is for the initial uh, vaccination and the second is the follow-up. Um, so there's some controversy right now as to whether or not uh, the incoming president said he wants to release all the vaccines. And is that going to affect that? Because I'm sure that's causing some concern uh, out there that whether or not that's going to be the case. But it sounds like you you said that when they ship to us, uh, whether it's Wayne County or whether it's another medical provider, they're actually sending two doses for, for each person. Uh, I, I don't know how they're maintaining those to make sure that when Susie or James comes in and gets that shot, if that's going to I, know, I realize it wouldn't be possible that it's going to have their name on it, but I would assume there's some uh, a computerized system that uh, says there's these are in reserve for other. Yeah. Patients. So, so Commissioner, let me let me clarify. Uh, I think what I said wasn't clear. So, um, when we we are not getting shipped two doses per person, 
So um, what I said is that let's, let's say today I received a thousand doses. Then immediately Wayne County Local Health Department has on reserve at the CDC a thousand dose for a second shipment that won't be released until we go and order it. So our ordering system, we have to specify, are you ordering a first dose or a second dose? The second dose should always match whatever you received for the first shipment. So the fear of someone getting a first dose will not have a second dose is almost non-existent or, or at least very, very, very minimal. As for your first, uh, question about the new administration and their plans. I think this is yet to be seen. And if it's decided that we're going to release everything, including first and second dose, then it becomes our responsibility in making sure we track those and we keep uh, monitoring our supplies. Currently, uh, currently, the state has advised us to not save anything for a second dose because that dose is reserved. And when it's time and ready to receive it, you can order it. And, and we have had that happen. So we did receive an initial shipment on December uh, 17 of 1950. When we went online and ordered a second dose, we got the second dose for 1950 exactly. And this is what we're using for the second dose currently. Okay. And uh, Mr. Chair, I'll be done in just a moment. Uh, I wanted to ask also- You have the floor, Commissioner, take our, your time. The efficacy of the vaccine, how long that's good for, uh, because I, I've heard some reports that it may not, it's, it's probably not going to be longer than a year, uh, but I thought you might've also picked something up uh, that might be beneficial. Right. I think it's too early. It, it, there, there has been some reports, I believe Pfizer did announce either yesterday or today that they are certain that it's good for one year. There has been uh, earlier reports that said it might be up to three years. I think we don't know until that time lapses, but even one year I think is, is absolutely wonderful because that's what we get for the seasonal flu. And it seems that if this is the case, then the COVID vaccine would become similar to when we get the flu shot, you get also a COVID shot. And I think that's makes it even more important for us to try to get everyone vaccinated, as many as possible within that first year. Absolutely. Uh, and then Absolutely. reduce the likelihood that we're gonna see a large outbreak in the future. Uh, sure. That's all I have right now, but I, uh, I appreciate the input <clears throat> and appreciate you doing this today. Pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, did I do the right thing there? I didn't cut myself off, did I? Uh, your picture is gone. Oh, there we go. There you are. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Barga and Commissioner Scott, uh, I'm going to come to you in a, just a second here. A couple of things have come up on the chat uh, that I would like to address uh, uh, before we move on. Uh, and I'm going to address the first one myself and then Dr. Hamami, if you want to jump in and tell me how wrong I am. Uh, a Cheryl Olson, who's uh, attending the meeting today, sent through the chat that, uh, you know, we have uh, that Midwest Consortium of Government and that uh, I imagine this is the uh, National Health and Human Services has uh, agreed to release sheep, sheep raises at millions. I don't know what that means of the vaccines to those eight states that are currently being held back by the Trump administration, and then she comments that we need to press for a higher number of, uh, of uh, vaccines to come here to Wayne County. Uh, let, let me address that question this way. There simply is not enough vaccine out there to do everybody right now. And you better believe that every jurisdiction is pressing for more vaccine to come to their jurisdiction. Um, and I'm sure we are, and I'm sure the city of Detroit is, as well as the hospital systems. Uh, but I will comment that the last thing you want is the number of vaccines that your local jurisdiction receives is in direct relation to the political power of individuals in that jurisdiction. Uh, we need to distribute this vaccine um, without regard uh, for the politics involved that we follow the CDC guidelines and do it in an even-handed manner. Uh, if you have some politically powerful folks, 
that might drag vaccines away from other jurisdictions that are not as politically powerful uh, and then short the people there. Uh, so in my opinion, yes, everybody is pressing for more and there simply is not, not enough um, uh, uh, vaccines for everybody right now. But the more we can distribute them uh, and do it by the CDC guidelines and have it even handed from the public health uh, is in my opinion, the best way to go about it, not who the powerful political folks are uh, that can drag uh, additional resources to their area while other people are being left short. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, and I don't think he's on the call, uh, but uh, Commissioner Kinesic is asking uh, about school teachers and their vaccine. Dr. Hamami, do we know about that? And I see Senator Polhanke is also on the call here, and uh, she is also concerned about teachers. So, Absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. I, I can answer that. So um, as I mentioned earlier, education uh, has been one of the group prioritized by the state and the governor mentioned, and uh, we certainly are considering those in the same level as law enforcement. Um, the way we are handling this, uh, since early in the pandemic, we have been working very successfully and efficiently with RISA, which is dealing with the school districts. In order for us to know how and when to start scheduling teachers, we need to know, again, how many teachers and which school district they belong to so we can put them in blocks. So rather than to reach to every school in Wayne County, we approached Teresa and uh, again, we've been working in a great way as partners through this and Risa volunteered to get all this information. Risa reached to all the school districts, asked every school dis uh, superintendent uh, to um, uh, survey their teachers, how many are there? And, and we're not only talking about teachers, we're talking about everybody who is in a school building because we want to offer that protection so we can resume in-person classes. Um, uh, so so uh, this survey is expected to be given to us by uh, the 14th. So hopefully tomorrow or the day after. Once this survey becomes in our hands, then it becomes a matter of scheduling Again, scheduling is going to depend on how much vaccine we have. So can we do right. a, a two school districts every day, three school districts every day? It all depends on are there 50 or 25 in each school district? And that's what we're dealing with. So this is why everything is coordinated with uh, RISA. And I see that uh, a question about charter schools and private schools, although they are not covered by RISA, but RISA is also reaching out to them to get us that information as well. All righty, thank you. And doctor, does that include uh, charter schools? Yes, sir. Charter schools, private schools, all those are going to be included in RISA survey. So this is uh, all part of uh, continuing to build the ship as we're leaving port. Yep. Um, and so that's the situation. I also want to clarify uh, the comment because uh, it's come back uh, that um, uh, the governor's press release today said millions and was not uh, specific on that. Um, okay. Um, let me go. Uh, Commissioner uh, Varga, do you have a few questions here? Actually, all of my questions uh, were already asked, but I could um, just say that uh, I do know firsthand that Henry Ford has started their uh, process and did send out emails to um, most 65 and over. And um, they did ask for everyone to sign up for portals and that is what they're going to use to schedule their appointments. So I can verify that one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Scott, uh, do you have any sorry questions? Sorry if I find a... I'm sorry, Commissioner. No, I sound right, a little hoarse today. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, don't, don't party so late at night, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Scott, do you have a... Uh, a question or two or three for uh, Dr. Hamami. It's 
Commissioner Scott still with us? Okay, uh, Commissioner I'm Scott, uh, yeah. let me know when. Oh, you're there. I, had my, I was muted. I'm sorry. No problem, Commissioner. You have the floor. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I think uh, Commissioner Anderson has asked several of my questions, um, but I want to know about the qualified health centers. You know, I have one in Hamtramck and there's one in Western Wayne. Now, will they be getting um, the, uh, the vaccine? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner. So uh, you know that we are, uh, the, the one in Amtramic is actually part of the health department. Um, so they did receive an initial dose of the Moderna vaccine. However, they literally received a very small shipment. I think it didn't um, um, go beyond 40 doses. Um, and initially, the plan for the federally qualified health centers is for uh, those that have the capacity to vaccinate other staff in health centers in priority group 1A. We are working to see if we can get them Pfizer vaccine as well, because we do have a freezer at the clinic in Hamtramck and we can store it. And if we get at least one tray, which is 975 doses, then that immediately increase our capacity to vaccinate more people. So we're working with the state to see how we can boost that, but yes, um, uh, FQHCs did receive an allocation of the Moderna doses. Okay, they just got the Moderna, but you're going to see if they can get the Pfizer also? Yes, ma'am. that ma what you said? Okay. Yes. Now, um, I have a lot of seniors uh, in Hamtramck. You know, I just have one senior building, but there are a lot of seniors. And I just want to know how I can... Um, help all of them? How do you suggest I do? Again, what we mentioned, uh, whatever health system they are affiliated with, then that would be the first priority. I know there is, uh, they're closer to Henry Ford. They might be affiliated with Henry Ford. They might be affiliated with DMC. It is something to, I did include DMC in my report because it's more considered the city of Detroit, but probably most of them are part of the DMC patient population and they can get it from DMC. So that would be the first uh, uh, option. Those that are not affiliated, again, we mentioned Beaumont is willing to take those as well as eventually others. Um, and uh, lastly, if um, there are other uh, clinics uh, that, uh, let's say the, the uh, health center, the federally qualified health center has more doses and we decide that seniors can get those uh, from the health center, then that would be a third option, but it is not happening yet. So I don't want to uh, uh, have them go to the health clinic to uh, and, and just discover that they do not have doses for them. But specifically right now, we're talking about health systems, hospitals that are able to accommodate this population. Thank you. You know, and, and a lot of my seniors are 55 and over they're able to get into the senior buildings. Now, will they be able to get it? Uh, I, I, if I understood, they're 65 and older or 50? No, so, some are 55 and over. Uh, unfortunately, the cutoff by the state is 65 and older. So, so it is those that are 65, 65. Even if they're in the senior buildings? Even if they are, yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's all I have at the moment, I think. OK, thank you, Dr. Hamami. And let Pleasure. me just say that um, the um, clinic did an excellent job. It was a long wait yesterday, but <laughs> but they did a great job over at the clinic. So thank, thank you, you, Commissioner. Um, you, I appreciate you're welcome. The and that's the Ham, that's the Hamtramck Clinic, uh, Commissioner uh, Scott. No, that was that was Wayne County's. <laughs> that, that was our the, our drive through. Our drive through. Yeah, that clinic. was the drive through yesterday. Oh, okay. Which All was right, like uh, but stay there, Commissioner. Uh, I'll go around one more time if people have additional questions. Uh, Doctor Hamami, before I go around, uh, I've got a couple of questions for you, or maybe even a couple of statements. But I'm going to repeat again, and I guess it's forward slash WayneCounty.com slash COVID nineteen. That website will be updated um, uh, every day 
with uh, the hospital systems that we're talking about and where the availability is, uh, correct, doctor? Yes. Yeah, yes. so I think, I think people bookmark waynecounty.com slash COVID-19, both for the county and for the state information. The links to the state are embedded there and you can do all your business there. Uh, and, and doctor, just as I was listening to you with this phase 1A, we're, we're probably somewhere around 40,000, you say maybe up to 50,000. And right now we're sitting on 2000 doses, right? So uh, I think again, that goes to the patients that, uh, that we need to show out there. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, everybody wants to be first in line and that's certainly understandable. Uh, but that's until the numbers start improving with uh, the number of doses we get, uh, it still is gonna be this way. Uh, does the city of Detroit basically in the same situation we are with the number of doses that they're getting and how much is going out to the hospital systems there? I was gonna ask you about the DMC, but you, qual you clarified that. Are, are they basically in the same situation over there with what they have available to them that we are in the county? Um, they, they do have slightly more. Um, but I don't think that is the local health department proper. I think that includes uh, the hospitals and health systems that are there. I know that um, their vaccination plan included a collaboration with Henry Ford and Wayne State University. Um, uh, my uh, numbers say that the uh, local health department got 2000 doses of Moderna and 3900 of Pfizer and uh, but the hospitals got almost 40,000 uh, doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, uh, so um, I, I think, again, these are like we're, we're talking about combined numbers between the health department and everybody else in the city of Detroit. And that depends on the assessment of how many people <clears throat> uh, in what phase. Yes. Uh, and so that will vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction in terms of the total number you receive. Um, let's talk about side effects of this uh, uh, vaccine. Uh, probably by the end of today, uh, 10 million shots will go into American arms uh, over the, since we began vaccinating. Uh, I have no way of estimating, but I'd say worldwide, let's say there's another 50 million, so 60 million doses. Uh, you know, there was great concern, you know, that one doctor a week ago, out, I believe in California, that hit the media. What do we know about side effects of this, uh, the, any of these vaccines now, and how they compare to, let's say, the MMR, how they compare to uh, the annual flu vaccination? Are we seeing more or less side effects? Could you uh, look, talk to us about that for a sec? Absolutely. So, uh, uh... Mr. Chair, you, you, you mentioned these numbers that are very good and, and very promising. Let me uh, take a step uh, a little bit and talk about the side e effects that they were seen during the clinical trials. And now that we are almost four weeks into this and in Europe, they started a little bit earlier than we are. And uh, as you said, there is close now to let's say 30 million people that received the vaccines and um, uh, we know whether they had side effects or not. <clears throat> the, uh, in the US, there is a very great and useful app that is called vSafe, V as in Victor, safe, that the minute you are vaccinated, you scan a barcode and um, it asks you, when did you get the vaccine and what lot number and whether it was Pfizer or Moderna. And then for the first uh, two weeks on a daily basis, it asks you whether you experience fever, whether you experience chills and all that. And then it does that for your second dose as well. So this is, again, a great pool of data that is being captured as we are going into active vaccination. So far, the expected side effects are what we are seeing. Uh, sore muscles, soreness at the injection site, fatigue, mild fever in some cases, uh, high fever that can be up to 100 with some chills, but it shouldn't last more than 24 hours. All these are signs that the vaccine is working. Your body is reacting to it and it's building immunity. Some are saying that the second dose is going to have 
more severe reactions than the first dose. As we are now getting into the second dose, we are again not seeing anything that is very highly uh, concerning. As you mentioned about <coughs> worldwide, I think there has been four cases of death that are being investigated as vaccine related. So four out of 15 million, that makes this vaccine safer than regular aspirin. Okay. So, so uh, again, we're, we're not seeing anything that would say the risks outweigh the benefits and let's stop. Thank you. Uh, we've also talked about uh, the age group. Well, we haven't talked to zero to 16, uh, not being vaccinated right now. Could you briefly uh, describe why that is? And, and uh, is that age group ever going to come into the uh, vaccine protocol? So uh, this age group was not included in the clinical trials. So did, uh, 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 the clinical trials did not include pregnant women. So these are the two categories that currently it is not recommended they get vaccinated just because we don't know what effect it might have on them. And this is simply why we're saying 16 and over. In the future, would clinical studies include that group and then it becomes similar to the flu vaccine? I suspect so, but again, right now, the priority is on the group yeah. where if you get the virus and the infection, then you will have a much more uh, severe uh, infection. Are there current trials going on for those groups? Um, no, 